goal was to get back to playing, and obviously Augusta is the top of that list. But when it comes to your health, no matter how big your dreams are and how big the goals are, you don't know if it's going to be possible. Yes. Yes, sir. How, how are you? you doing? Good to see you guys. Good to see you too, sir. Good to Welcome see you guys back. again. Thank Welcome you. Back. I Great appreciate you. you guys. The first ride down Magnolia Lane each spring is often the one filled with the most promise, the most potential, the most peace. For Gary Woodland, the memories of the Masters one year ago are especially poignant. He had his best career finish at Augusta, tied for 14th, but only three weeks later, his life was about to change. I was playing in Mexico, and Saturday night, before the final round, I had a nightmare. Jumped up in the middle of the night out of bed, tough to go back to sleep, and I was almost fearful to go to the golf course. He calls me, and he's like breathing heavily, and he's just like, something is wrong. He's like, I'm tremoring. I can't even pull back the putter. You know, this is like a career ruiner, and he's just panicking, and I'm like, what is going on? I did notice his hands were shaking a lot. Some of his coaches and I would talk about it. His eyes would be a little red. He was just like a zombie. A little nauseous and fear of golf, fear of almost death. Sleep provided no relief either. It was like somebody was coming into bed and scaring me in dead sleep and I'd just jump out. It continued to get worse. I have a fear of heights, and I literally jump out of bed at 2 a.m. and feel like I'm falling to my death. And I'm to a point where I'm laying on the bed for an hour, face down, grabbing the bed as hard as I can to tell myself I'm laying down, I'm not falling. Following multiple MRIs, doctors discovered a lesion similar to a tumor growing on Woodland's brain. And I go meet with a specialist, and he explained what was going on. You're not going crazy. Those aren't nightmares and panic attacks, those are seizures. And the fear and everything you're seeing, this lesion on your brain is on the part of your brain that controls fear and anxiety. And the thing that made it worse too was I have this lesion on my brain, on the part of the brain that controls fear and anxiety, so it's just pressing on it. So the fear just grew. And even when the doc told me I'm not dying, I have something in my head that's telling me I'm dying. And it was, it was awful. Placed on medicine for seizures, the side effects were creating severe fatigue. As doctors monitored the lesion on his brain, Woodland never stopped golfing. They increased the meds, which just made me more tired, made me more moody, made me more loose focus. I mean, I'd be playing golf and I'd, I'd have my caddy would hand me a seven iron ball, talk about the shot, and I'd get over the ball and I forget what club I'm hitting. I said, I think the quality of life that you're living right now is not very good. And it's not very good for you. It's not very good for anyone. I mean, it can't be good for your wife at home. And it's not going to be good for you and your kids. Four months after first experiencing symptoms, Woodland would tell the public for the first time and announce his plans for surgery on September 18th to remove the lesion from his brain. What risk was involved with surgery? Once surgery became real five days out, I'm like, if this goes wrong, I'm dead. What if I never play golf again? What if I can't hold my kids again? Because of the risks of the brain surgery, Woodland wrote letters to his wife and each of his three children, placed them in a secure location, and told his wife to find them if something went wrong. Writing a letter for future is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. To tell my girls that there's nothing more that I'd want to do than walk them down the aisle. To tell my son I'm not going to see him be what he wants to be. To tell my wife how much she meant to me. And I'm, I wouldn't have changed anything. I just remember him going back in the bedroom to write it and him just 
coming out and his, he was just bawling. I mean, our kids are so young and missing out on like, the, not like only big things like weddings and stuff, but like their daily grind of, it's going to be hard. The letters never needed to be opened. Doctors performed a successful craniotomy during which they cut a baseball-sized hole into his skull to remove the bulk of the lesion. Rehabilitation would begin. Walked in that place, determined to walk out. His return to golf would begin as well. The Woodlands installed a putting green in what used to be their dining room, so Gary could practice his putting during his rehabilitation. Still got it. I was like, we're going to be all right. Woodland says that the months since the surgery have not been without challenges. The road to recovery continues. But it is a road that has led him here, back to Magnolia Lane, back to Augusta National. <sighs> It'll be emotional for me because everything started right after last year's Masters Tournament. And when I was going through it where I didn't know if I'd ever play again, major championships, the Masters is on top of that list of something you want to do again. I'm out here six months from surgery. Dreams do come true. 